The radio tucked under his arm provides company as Mzecha Kwon casts an eye over his three-acre farm in Kipsigak, Nandi County. Thinking of the years past, of the excitement of the glory years, and of the quiet years afterwards, and always, always of the silver kettle. The sight of it reassuring him that none of it was a dream. He introduces himself to us, defining himself in one short sentence. My name is Lazarus Yifkwan. And, and I've been a runner who ran in Kenya. His English is crisp, his memory sharp. In this moment, he is transported to where it all began. The year was 1954. Lazaro Chepkwon was just 19 years old when he was selected by the colonial government to participate in the six-mile run in London, becoming the first Kenyan ever to run in Britain. He didn't complete the race, but he made a splash on the truck. They ask me, what, what, what will you say now? My answer, I said first, first I said thank you very much for giving me this, because I've never seen this. The same year, Chip Korn went on to participate in the Empire Games in Vancouver, Canada, finishing 7th in the 6-mile race and 12th in the 3-mile race. He returned home with his trophies. Coming to London, we came through a ship, not air now from Canada. We came up to London by ship and we stayed two weeks in London, showing us everywhere. We go around Queen's hotels where very many parts of London. And then we rest there and then we come back to Kenya. An injury meant Chip Coyne couldn't participate in the Olympic Games of 1956, and after that he quietly disappeared from the world of athletics, leaving others to hoist the country's flag. We defense Kenya. We brought our Kenya flag. We, we, we bring everything Kenya. The most treasured of his trophies is an unlikely object, a tarnished kettle he says was given to him for his participation in the races. He had to fight hard to bring it back home with him. That European told me that when I get that kettle, he told me that, sell this thing, because you know, you know export and import. I know you are running. I told him, yes, I can sell. But in fact, I say, how can I sell this thing when I have children at home and my friends? I was putting my hand back where I place tracksuit, going to the field, coming early in the morning, walking with it until I came out to Kenya. Today, Chip Coin has little to show for those early years. It was a different time. If it was this, ah, I could fly in an aeroplane, getting a lot of men like this young man. Instead, he went back to school to study and became a teacher. People try to come and say, come and try to teach our children home. Come and teach our children. I go and teach them. What a wonderful thing there. And the years flew past. His children are now grown, and at 81, Chip Coyne leads a quiet life on his farm, earning a modest living from the work of his hands. But he still keeps up with developments in athletics. This young man, I'm encouraging them to buy lands and then on that. Mutu anapenda maendeleo, pia ata kwa mambo ya ukulima, ye anapenda sana mambo ya ufukaji na ukuzaji wa machani chai. And when the Olympic Games begin in Brazil later this year, he will be watching. He gives us one last glimpse of the kettle before he puts it away again. To others, it is just another tarnished kettle. To Mzechep Kwon, it is a port of dreams fulfilled. Wilkinson Abwa, Citizen TV, your story.